Hello friends, uh, today's theme is on Hindi cinema and Bimal Roy and the lecture is on symbolic expression and we have in the studio uh, Manisha Sharma with us as an interpreter and as in the earlier lecture we talked about the cinema of Bimal Roy and how the kind of cinema which was made by him made a lot of contribution to the Indian society immediately after independence. And Bimal Roy, he began his journey as a director, as I told you, with Uthair Pathe in Bengali and thereafter he made a number of films in late 40s and 50s as well as 1960s as well. And the kind of films which were made by Bimal Roy, they were quite realistic in nature. They were meaningful in that sense that they were concerned with the socio-economic problems of the society and they wanted to in a way raise those concerns which were important from uh, the point of view of the society. We also find that how he was also influenced by the neorealism of uh, Italian cinema and some of the films like Bicycle Thieves of uh, De Sica when they were exhibited in the India International Film Festival when it was exhibited these kinds of films in India. Then Bimal Roy was also influenced by that cinema and we find some kind of resemblances uh, with uh, Bicycle Thieves of DC Ka when we uh, tend to see uh, uh, Dobi Gazameen. Apart from that he was also concerned with other issues as well and we talk about uh, films like Devdas uh, which was in a way some kind of a uh, not only reflective of the problems with regard to the class differences, but at the same time how the alcoholism of the protagonist becomes some kind of a rebellion against the society. And uh, in this context, uh, another film called uh, Sujata, which was dealing with the concerns of uh, uh, the untouchables in the society could also uh, be seen. In terms of references, one can refer to Rinki Bhattacharya, Bimal Roy, A Man of Silence, Feroz Rangunwala's Bimal Roy, A Monograph, Rinki Roy Bhattacharya edited Bimal Roy, A Man Who Spoke in Pictures, B. D. Garg, So Many Cinemas. So, all these kinds of films which were made by Bimal Roy during this period and specifically uh, we were talking about Do Biga Zameen and how Do Biga Zameen uh, was inspired uh, by the idea of neuralism. So, in this uh, uh, film we, we find that uh, how this, uh, this kind of a cinema was largely talking about the concerns of the downtrodden. You can see the clip as well. <laughs> So, if you see this kind of a clipping, which is in a way reflective that how the kind of concerns which were there in society that the agriculturalist or the peasants, they had to seek money from the money lender for which they had to mortgage the land. And uh, when they took that kind of a loan uh, from the money lender, how the money in that sense, a lot of interest was to be paid. And uh, huge sum amounts of money they were being asked uh, from uh, the agriculturalist or the peasant from the money lenders and how they tried to exploit them. And in the last scene, you can see the movement of the train that how people they had to go for some kind of a displacement from their original lands where they were living and how from their native uh, villages they had to go to cities and in the cities also they were being exploited by the capitalist section or the upper section of the society how these people those who migrated from the rural areas to the urban centers, uh, they had to live in, uh, in poor settlements. So, all this uh, was uh, reflected in this uh, particular film and this film also talks about the idea of rural indebtedness and the uh, growing menace of the debt, uh, debt trap that how they had to take money and uh, the kind of nexus between the money lenders, zamindar and the industrialist in perpetuating the depeasantization in that sense that peasants they will not be peasants no longer and how by selling their lands when they will shift to uh, the urban centers they will become labor for example in this film how the protagonist becomes uh, a rickshaw puller 
but we also find that how film ends on a hopeful note uh, when it was shown that the protagonist is finding uh, moving along with the family towards a rising sun. So, it is in a way trying to signify some kind of a new beginning as well and it was also connected with the idea of nation building as well that 1950s cinema was concerned with the idea of nation building and how cinema also played its own part in that sense that it had to build the nation uh, after uh, the British they left the country. We also see in this uh, context that the theme of the film was quite universal in nature as this kind of these kinds of concerns of a poor man's life uh, and the issue of self esteem of the poor. Uh, they were there in every society and uh, in a society where this kind of a poverty could be seen. Uh, where we find that how poor they had to lose their self esteem in some sense and society was also in a way functioning in, a, in, a, in an economic arrangement which was favoring the prosperous class against the underprivileged of the society and the people those who were dominant they were trying to in a way have some kind of a dominance over the people those who were feeble or weak and how the welfare of the society they were trying to suppress the famished or undernourished people of the society as well. So, uh, we find that how some of the concerns which were raised by Bimal Roy in his films they were quite realistic in nature. Later in 1954 he also made a film called Nokri uh, which was raising the issue of unemployment and which was one of the important social issues of those times. Uh, where this issue was plaguing the youth of that generation and the dreams and the aspirations of the educated youth uh, got shattered as they were struggling in the city for any kind of an employment and finally we see that in this film Kishore Kumar uh, played the role of the protagonist and how he tries to commit uh, suicide and he is saved by his lady love and they decide that they will face the life together. So, uh, we find that the concern of unemployment was quite there in the 1950s as well and this multiplied in the decade of the 1960s and thereafter in the decade of the 70s it got reflected in the angry young man image of Amitabh Bachchan uh, where we find that the concerns of the society regarding unemployment, poverty and all other socio-economic concerns. Uh, so, this kind of an anti-establishment agenda of the youth could be seen in the image uh, which was carried on or in a way established by Amitabh Bachchan in 1970s. So, this uh, had some kind of roots in the society of the 1950s and 1960s as well. So, when we talk about other films of uh, Bimal Roy, Devdas was another which was talking about the class differences in the society and how it was portraying the zamindari class and false sense of pride as well and how the role played by Dilip Kumar as Devdas uh, who is shown as a weak character who fails to marry his childhood friend Parvati played by Suchitra Sen. Uh, due to the pressures of his family. So, in this way we find that alcoholism which is being shown in which uh, they, Dilip Kumar is in a way uh, in a way connected and he becomes uh, alcoholic in nature and this alcoholism is also his weakness in that sense that he was not able to control uh, the situation, he was not able to stand up uh, to fight uh, with the society or with the family so that he could marry his uh, uh, friend. And we also find that uh, this alcoholism was also in a way reflective of the kind of rebellion which he wanted to pursue against the society at large. And uh, such uh, kind of a cinema also raised uh, the kind of concerns which were there in the as you can see in the clip as well. <laughs> This is the climax of the film where Devdas dies in the village where Parvati lives. So, you see in this clip that how uh, the role played by 
Parvati, Suchita, Sen and once she realizes that the person who has died belongs uh, to her village and it might be Devdas because he made a promise to her that he would come and visit uh, her at some point of time. So, we find that when uh, this kind of a thing uh, could be seen, uh, could be realized by Suchitra Sen and when she finally runs to go out of the house, but the gate of the house uh, they were being closed and she could not go out of the house because the way she was running it was uh, not advisable for women in those times uh, to go or run out of the house. So, this also in a way reflects the kind of patriarchal system which existed in the society and how Parvati though she was married in a, in a affluent house, uh, but the her husband was more than twice her age and uh, but as, as, a young, as a young woman uh, she had to marry him because she did not have those kinds of finances uh, where she where uh, her family could find a suitable match for her then we also see that such kind of concerns regarding women they were important in the films of uh, bimal roy and the concern of emancipation of women and how they were also connected with the ideas of the social religious reform movement in the 19th century and uh, we find that how Gandhian mass movement also saw larger participation of women during the freedom struggle and constitution of India enforced the principle of equality for the all citizens when India became independent. So, these trends of modernization and the idea of social change they were bringing a new set of questions uh, with regard to the position of women and as I told you that how uh, in a way women they were more determined then their male counterparts in the films which were made by uh, Bimal Roy and uh, women they were uh, shown to be more heroic in nature. For example, in Devadas we find that how Parvati goes against the social norms by falling in love with Devadas and in one of the scenes she enters Devadas room uh, at night asking him to marry her. She even risks her honor by entering Devadas room at night. But she is shown to be more resolute, more determined in nature and on the other hand we find that how Devdas uh, could not make up his own mind and uh, though he pretends that uh, he is able to understand the situation, but finally we see that he is not able to stand for himself uh, against his uh, family and the society. And uh, his alcoholism in that sense is also reflective of his weakness in that sense. And we find that in another film called Udair Pathe, uh, the role uh, of uh, the rich businessman's sister uh, played by Benita Roy as Gopa and how she also takes some sort of a resolute stand in favor of protagonist Anup uh, played by Radha Mohan Bhattacharya. And uh, his uh, script which he had written uh, was uh, manuscript was misappropriated by uh, the rich brother of the female protagonist and he also got it published in his own name and we also find that when Radha Mohan Bhattacharya how uh, the, ro the character which he played uh, of Anup he is attacked by the goons of uh, businessmen and uh, the sister of that businessman supports Anup uh, played by Radha Mohan Bhattacharya and his liberal thinking rather than uh, in a way siding with the high handed attitude of his brother. So, uh, such kind of portrayals of women uh, they definitely convey uh, that the females, female protagonists or the heroines in the films of Bimal Roy they were far more heroic uh, in that sense and we also find that another film called Parinita in 1953 which was based on the 1914 Bengali novel of the same name by Sharat Chandra Chattopadhyay and uh, the character played by Meena Kumari Lalita she maintains a dignified silence about her secret marriage to Shekhar uh, played by Ashok Kumar and her resoluteness can be seen from the fact that despite pressure from her family she does not marry Green who even helped her family economically. So, we find that how uh, in, the, in this film as well Parinita or uh, which uh, conveys the married woman and how secretly both of them uh, they got married. And despite a lot of pressure from uh, the family that she gets married to someone who is helping the family in a financial manner, uh, she is far more determined uh, in that sense that uh, 
she does not tell it, tell it uh, uh, to anyone that how she is a married woman, but at the same time she is also not ready. You can see the clip in this context. A love story between a wealthy man's son and a middle class neighbor. <laughs> So in the film clip we say that how Ashok Kumar had that kind of a, uh, uh, some kind of a audacity to uh, marry uh, the female protagonist played by Amina Kumari, but at the same time uh, he is not in a way able uh, to convey it uh, to the family and uh, the kind of resoluteness which was uh, shown by Meena Kumari in this film uh, is also reflective of the strong characters uh, which were in a way portrayed by uh, Bimal Roy. Then we also find that how Biraj Bahu uh, which was made in 1954, uh, it shows the trials and the tribulations of uh, 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 Kamini Kaushal who played the central character in her dedication, selflessness and dedication and integrity is being talked about. And it also shows her love and affection uh, and loyalty towards her husband. We also find that the kind of techniques which were in a way used by uh, Bimal Roy that he was a pioneer in the source of light photography that is taking a special care to show where the source of light has to light up a set or a place whether it is day or night. So, it added an element of reality to his photography as well as his films and his location shootings with the mobile RFX camera in Dobiga Zameen in 1953. Uh, they were also being done to impart an authentic flavor to the film. So, we find that how he adds the reality of atmosphere or conduct or psychology in his films. So, he added this kind of a, another reality that was the conflict of the classes as well and the theoreticians like Navendu Ghosh uh, says that this realism to use Maxim Gorky's words, socialist realism was for the first time depicted on its screen by Bimal Roy and Udair Pathe and Hindi version Hamrahi. So, we find that this was again in a way emphasized in Dobi Gazameen by Bimal Roy and through his techniques of cinematography, his themes, his portrayals he maintained some kind of a closer relationship with the reality. And this reality was not unmediated, camera, story, artifice, they mediate between reality and its portrayal. We also find that some of the films which were made by him, uh, though they were not directly connected uh, with reality as Madhumati which was made in 1958 and how Ritwik Ghatak who was another person concerned with the idea of reality, he was the script writer. Uh, for uh, this film and it was based on his, his story and it was dealing with the idea of reincarnation. And we find that the source of inspiration for this film uh, were, were later times as well, Kars and Om Shanti Om, these were the films uh, which were made later, which were dealing uh, with the issue of reincarnation and the uh, main, main characters were played by Dilip Kumar and Vijanti Bala as you can see the film clip as well. तुम क्यों खुश हो? तुम क्यों खुश हो? मैं तुम्हारी एक तस्वीर So, we find in this film that how the kind of cinematography which was there, the kind of techniques which have been used by Bimal Roy and uh, the script in this way that it was based on the theme of reincarnation uh, which was not in a way directly concerned with the kind of socio-economic problems of the society. So, it was some kind of a fantasy in that sense, but the kind of treatment which was given to this film. Uh, uh, or which was concerned with the reincarnation and the kind of songs picturization in the particular uh, by Bimal Roy. They added a lot of value to this film and as we all of us are aware that how songs are integral to the Indian cinema and so may and we have songs for every occasion as well. 
another film uh, which was very very important from that point of view of sujata which was tackling the issue of untouchability in the caste system and how an orphaned harijan girl sujata played by nutan is reared in a high class household as a companion to the daughter rama shashikala played by shashikala in that house and uh, prospective bridegroom played by sunil dutt for rama uh, wants to marry sujata which creates some kind of a tension in the family and how mother accidentally falls from the staircase and gets hurt and sujata in a way donates her blood to save the mother and the caste issue is resolved uh, finally in the end so we realize that uh, these kinds of uh, films which were made and which were talking about the idea of nation building which were talking about removing all sorts of uh, distinctions which were there in the society so many a times we see that solution uh, which was being suggested in the film was comparatively in a way more simple but at the same time we also realize that in those times when these kinds of issues they were being raised uh, it was also very very important because the kind of conservative society which was there the orthodox manners of the people so they needed some kind of a social change and social change uh, it takes place over a period of time it is a uh, it is a slow process so not only legislation but uh, the kind of change in the mindset of the people will definitely play an important role and such kind of portrayals as it was in sujata definitely inspired uh, so many members of the society to change their mindset as you can in a way see the film clip as well so in the film clip you see that how sujata who was in a way reared in a household uh, which was of the higher caste of the society and she belonged to uh, lower caste and so despite uh, despite these kind of distinctions uh, she was uh, reared in a upper class household and finally how when uh, she is, is in a way being married uh, to a upper caste person so these kinds of things they are also being talked about in the film and how the class positions they are explained in the context of the pollution of the blood and the mingling of the blood when sujata donates blood uh, to her mother and sujata's deliverance from a, a subordinate sexual identity also comes through marriage as well he also directed a film called parak which was some kind of a satirical look on the indian democracy and how the central character is a postmaster who is given a mysterious check for rupees 5 lakh to be given to anyone who will use it to benefit of the people in the village and all greedy and influential people of the village are busy trying to convince everybody why they are most deserving of that particular money and all decide democracy is the best mean and decide to hold an election where winners they get money so the kind of uh, the atmosphere which was being created in in the village in that context and how uh, people they wanted to show that they are the most honest men uh, within the village that that could be seen then we also see that he made a film called bandhani where the story of a women prisoner is being shown that how she was serving the life imprisonment for uh, the murder and the new central figure Uh, was nutan and how this kind of an idea of suffering selfless sacrificing and uh, all this is being reflected in this film and it also shows that how uh, the indian women they were far more strong than uh, the, rather than weak as uh, they were being uh, prisoners of that particular society so we also see that how uh, the life of a convict is being depicted and it also reflects her humanity in the sense that Uh, the the doctor who was coming to jail was ready to marry her but even then she uh, is in a way ready to fight for some the for the indian independence struggle and finally she decides to go with her former lover
so this particular clip is trying to convey that how the kind of role which was played by kalyani or nutan in this film it had a lot of indomitable spirit and this kind of a spirit is reflected in the climax when she has this kind of an option to either lead a life which was full of luxury by marrying dharmendra who is the doctor and on the other hand either to go with ashok kumar who was playing Uh, the role of uh, the protagonist in that sense that he was concerned with the national movement and he would have uh, that kind of a life which will have a lot of hardships so we find that this kind of a uh, idea of sacrifice was reflected in this particular film and uh, she in a way transforms herself from a woman who is a prisoner of destiny to one who defines her own freedom because she is the one who finally decides that she will in a way go with ashok kumar we also see that how the kind of choice which she made in this uh, particular film uh, uh, was also reflective of her in- integ- integrity as well and uh, apart from that he also made a film called kabuliwala which was uh, uh, in a way directed by uh, himin gupta he was a producer for this and uh, it also talks about the humanism identity Uh, and a lot of identifies with the kind of differences which are there in the society and uh, we also see that the kind of films which were made by him they raised the consciousness of the masses and he was looking for some kind of a purposeful cinema and he also talked about the economic inequality social oppression poverty and uh, also in a way stood for the liberty equality and the liberal outlook so with this i'd like to end the discussion thank you very much